Welcome back to another match preview here at the Gallagher. It's for our second away game of this season, which will be at Chippenham. So before we look at the Chippenham trip, we must briefly acknowledge the last two home results. Nigel, the goalless draw against Hampton and Richmond on Tuesday. But before that, the loss to Truro. Uh, your thoughts on that game? Well, it proved to be a tough game, didn't it? The Truro game, that, like we said in the preview. Um, I was certainly impressed with, with them. They, you know, they, they, spelled, they obviously came with a game plan to set up, and you know they were the away team. So we said it before; they've got a lot of experience, especially down the spine of their team. You know, when you've got a player like Tyler Harvey on the pitch, and you've got a manager like the, the Nelson know-how of John Astley coming in, and that you're going to, you, you know, your basic sort of levels of fitness is going to be there. You're going to be, you know, well drilled, and defensively, you're going to be sound, aren't you? So. Yeah, you know, they came in, they did a job, and Maystone, you know, did struggle to break them down um, on the afternoon. But, you know, speaking to some of the fans, you know, they were sort of predicting just because they, they escaped relegation last year, like three or four nils, but that was never going to be the case. I think they're going to, from that performance, I think they're comfortably going to be a, a top 10 team, if not pushing for the playoffs. So, you know, now respecting you know, dubious goal, you know, again, it's depending on where your your point of view is. Some are saying it, it was obviously straight over the line. Some are saying it's it wasn't over the line. Down the other end from where I was sitting, so I couldn't see. But even on the highlights, it's like, and then you're not even sure which was it. Was it the first shot that was deemed to be over the line or the second? second Needs more shot? cameras. Needs more cameras. <laughs> you know, we haven't got the R at this level, but you know, it was just one of those as. Jay would say, you know, it's one of those, isn't it? You know, they either go for you or they don't go for you. And probably did enough to get a point out on the afternoon, um, but we didn't. And we move on and we, you know, go on to Hampton Richmond. So, Which we obviously got a point against them and another clean sheet. A bit more attacking intent as the game wore on, but uh, unable to break that young side down in the finish. Yeah, exactly. And they'd come off the back of a, a draw at Chelmsford. Um, the previous game, so again, that was good for them. And like we said in the preview, again, you know, it's a young side. So, again, Alan, Alan Julian, the goalkeeper, he had them well drilled. You know, that's what you've got to expect from this stuff. They, not have, they might not have a lot of talent, but they are going to be well drilled. They're going to get men behind the ball, they're going to come here, a big crowd. And don't let yourself forget, you know, it's, it's the first time that a lot of these players have played in front of a big crowd, you know. And it's the first time they've been full time. You know, people like Aaron Blair and Ben Brooks. You know, they've been used to being in a part time setup, and they're going to be here in, in in our setup. So it's going to take them time to adjust. And I think it just needs to be a bit of patience. And when we said it, we've said it before in our preview show. It's the time of year when you get these oddities in results. You know, no one's sort of finding their form. No one's got that sort of momentum behind them. So it's just about being patient, I think, and just sort of like trying to bed into your systems and. In your combinations and knowing what each player is going to do, and again, you know, we, we've said it. You know, John Benton came in literally just a couple of days before the the team, so you can see what he's trying to do. Them little balls around the corner and the through balls, but it's going to take time for them for the players to know what he's going to do and the parties he's going to make and the run he's going to do. And you know, he hasn't had a pre-season with us, so he's, he's just it will take time, and that's that's the thing. It's just everyone's just got to be patient with it, I think, and. And just sort of like see how it goes, and you know, the signs are there. The signs are definitely there. So back to Chippenham then, and starting with their goalkeeping department. Will Henry, his fourth season with the Bluebirds, last season supporters player of the year, and Alex Avenal is his understudy. He plays for the academy. He's actually a junior academy coach as well. So they've got a settled number one there, Nigel at Chippenham. So that consistency at the back, starting right at the back in between the sticks. Yeah, again, it's a difficult one to, to know, again, where they're going to go up until um, Tuesday evening when they played Weymouth. They were the only other, the only side from their first couple of games that didn't get a point. So they beat Weymouth on Tuesday night, so that's going to give them a little bit of a lift. But again, they were, you know, in these early season predictions, they was, rele you know, predicted to be struggling and if not relegated. So they've lost a couple of players, the key players again from last season. Yeah, I say you say that they've got the, they've got the, the goalkeeper there. That's that's a consistency that's going to help them to build that base off them, isn't it? So I've talked of gelling in the back line. The defenders, Nathaniel Williams. It's his second season, and he scored in his second ever game for Chippenham 
last season. Uh, the experienced Freddie Grant played for at least seven clubs in the National League South. Uh, Luke Haynes starts his second permanent season with the Bluebirds. Aaron Amity Holloway is another with experience, especially in the Football League. Uh, Will King in his fourth season with the Bluebirds after leaving Swindon. Uh, Lewis Colwell has joined after 10 years at Plymouth Argyle. Jack Poffley is a youth defender. Uh, some more experience and consistency in there for the Bluebirds, Nigel. Yeah, exactly that. You know, like, like we just said with the um, with the goalkeeping situation, a lot of them are in their second year. They all all come to the club with that experience. So, you know, you 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 would think they're going to be a tough nut to crack again. They're going to set up to be defensive. Whether being at home, it's going to give them a little bit more of an initiative to to um, have to come out and attack. Um, because I think we beat them down. We beat them down there early season it was last like a year. Two 0 scorcher, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, and then they, then they did the reverse fixture here just before Christmas last year. So, again, you would you you know from that sort of basis, and if you're you know, that continuation, you would think you know they're good set up defensively, and they can catch teams on the break as they did here at the Gallagher just before Christmas last year. But it's whether they've got that in, attacking intent to sort of really hurt teams and. And make them think, sort of thing. So you know, you know the way Maystone set up. They're going to set up again with that big, that defensive base, and you know, two clean sheets in three games. You know, proves that we can do that. But it's whether we can transcend that with our attacking options, yeah. and then ask them all the questions, the, the back line of questions. You know, they've got they've got the experience there, but again, it's early season, and it's just that gilling part of it, isn't it? It's, it's a battle of sort of like. Our attack versus their, it's obviously it's our attack versus their defence, but you know that's that's what it is, isn't it? You know. So we talk the back line needing to gel for Chippenham in terms of what's in front of them. The midfield: Joe Andrews is a youth midfielder from Southampton. Kane Bradbury starts his third season with Chippenham. Uh, Alex Bray joined the month before COVID struck, and he's been an ever present since then. Tom Mehew with his on-off relationship with the Bluebirds, he's now made 82 appearances and counting. For them, Mal Nichols is an academy graduate. Luke Spokes in his second season after joining from Bath at the start of last season. No bicycle jokes there, to be honest. Jake Evans in his second season, Welsh experienced. And Rex Mannings, who joined from Western Supermare in the summer. Pele Cusio and Joel Hall are youth players. And Tom Owen Evans helped get Kidderminster promoted in the 22-23 season, his second season here with Chippenham. Uh, might be more of a broken record than usual, Nigel, but consistency and experience are in there once more. My take on it is they've dusted their shelves, uh, but they've not bought many new trinkets in for display. Yeah, that's it. You know, they've lost, uh, like we said, a few key players from last year, and <coughs> the manager's been in there now for, for a few seasons, so a lot of the, the players will be coming in and they will be used to it, what what they're being asked to do. It's just whether they can, you know, throughout the course of the season, they can do that on a consistent basis, which, you know, they were a hierarchical mid-table side last year, wasn't they? So whether it's a, a player that was just like a newcomer last year, stepping up to the plate now that their experienced players have, have gone. Um, like you said, Evans is there. I think he was the one that scored the, the goal Believe so here, um, yeah. here at the Gallagher. So you know, and it was a, a, you know one of those ones that was like a wonder strike that you're not stopping. Yes, so bullet. again, you know, you'd think that players like Evans will be the ones now to look up and score goals on a more consistent basis and take that mantle, you know, and and get them higher up the table. So in the forward line for the Bluebirds, we've got Harry Parsons, who was with Swindon in the 1920 season, as in 1920-20, when they won the league. Uh, Will Dawes had consecutive promotions with Oxford City, then Yeovil last season. He can play all over the pitch, frankly, but listed as a forward on their website. Uh, Tyreek Johnson, ex Jules and Chelmsford, were his more local haunts relative to the Stones. He was at Chelmsford for the 22 23 playoff campaign. And finally, Matt McClure. You may remember him from such clubs as Aldershot, Maidstone, and Gloucester. A uh, familiar face to finish with there, Nigel, not necessarily the voice. Yeah, again, you know that that that's the experience there, isn't it? Tariq Johnson and um, Matt McClure, you know they've been around that area, they they're local to that area. You know, Aldershot, 
Gloucester and Chippenham, and you know that M4 corridor. They're all all uh, players that play in around that area. So you know they've definitely got the experience there in that front line, haven't they? You know we know what Matt, Matt McClure did when he was here. Um, I think he, he did get a hat trick, didn't he? he was a, before um, yeah, before the season before Barham got his hat trick, he was yeah. the last one since Franny to get to get that hat trick. So. Indeed. Yeah, he, you know, he did all right for us, didn't he? You know, came in as a trialist, but we signed him. And but for, well, I think he went just, just he went to Gloucester, didn't he, just before COVID. But, but yeah, do you know what I mean? Again, it's it, the experience is there, so you know, there's certainly going to be no pushovers, are they? So the early season form for the Bluebirds shows losses against high flying Farnborough and Dorking before. As Nigel's already mentioned, getting that win at Weymouth on Tuesday just gone. It's their eighth season and the eighth longest serving side in this division, Nigel. Again, I'll say it before I say it again, model of that word again, consistency. Yeah, that's right. And then they are, uh, again, like I said, your archetypal mid-table consistent side. And it's just going to be whether they can, you know, transcend that form and get more wins, get more goals, keep more clean sheets that's going to push them up the table and be challenging, you know. Because it's all right putting the performances in against, you know, on a one off on a one off basis, but teams that finish higher get that consistency going, don't they? And, and all teams at this stage of the season are looking for it. Yeah. So in that respect they've got that on their on their side because no team's actually got that sort of run of wins behind them. So you know, they're at home, it's going to be their, their, what would it be, their second home game, I would imagine, so they're going to have a, a big crowd, it's bank holiday weekend. You know, they've got nothing to lose, have they? That, that, that's the danger of it, you know, they've got nothing to lose. So the head-to-head -head record, it's all very tight affairs in the last decade or so. The last three fixtures have been away wins, most recently, just before last Christmas. As again, Nigel was mentioned here at the Gallagher, that absolute Christmas cracker, I think I probably called it on comms, uh, from Evans two days before Christmas. Uh, assuming this Saturday, Nigel, it's going to be another tight one? I think so. I mean, you know, you just you just go through the players that they've got there. Again, that model of consistency and experience and, yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's just going to be uh, who wants it the most, I guess. You know, I'm sure George or Craig and, and the team will, you know, have analysed them. They know what their strengths and weaknesses are and it's whether who can exploit each other's weaknesses and, Hopefully, fingers crossed, it's the stones that come out on top. So remember, if you can't make it to the game, be sure to tune in to Adrian Sharp and myself from 2.40 on Stones Live. You'll see us on the hot take and you'll hear us on the highlights once they go online a few hours after the game. So, well, another preview done. It's time to head over to Chippenham now. So we're on our way. Thanks again for watching. And as always, come, come on, on, you stones! stones.